hi hi <laughs> <laughs> How much fun can we have, right? So, hello everybody to the Artsy Bunch. We are the Artsy Bunch. We are a bunch of artists, a bunch of creative people. And I, I know so many artists and great creators. And I thought, well, you know what? I could just invite um, you guys into this space here. And we are going to have a conversation about creativity, about art, about what we are doing. And I have with me today Marie Stevens with Marie Stevens Art and hi <laughs> and uh, tell us a little bit about you Marie where are you located and there's a lot of yummy stuff behind you and around you so where are you in the world? I am a Midwestern artist and I live in eastern Iowa um, in a place called the Quad Cities which is nestled right along the Mississippi River. And if you think of the state of Iowa as like a pig shape or like, you know, how it has a little nose on the side, we're like kind of right under the nose where the Mississippi River runs east and west. So. Oh, cool. Yeah. Well, I am in Wisconsin. So, so today we are two Midwestern girls here. <laughs> yeah. What part of Wisconsin are you? Madison? By yeah. Madison. I'm an hour from Madison. So oh. I'm in the country also surrounded by beautiful waters and the Fox River that is flowing north. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> One of the few rivers that is going north. Yeah. So um, what are we going to talk about today? So I know about you. And I have seen some of your art. It is very colorful. It's very beautiful. You paint nature. Obviously, you seem to be inspired by nature. And um, so uh, I'm just always curious, what got you on this journey to be an artist? Did you start right away when you were born as a baby and you were born into this artsy family and they thought you were just the latest and greatest artist? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like wishful thinking, right? <laughs> Definitely not a prodigy. <laughs> but I have been, I guess art is like, when I think of art, I think of home, like home with my family, because that's kind of how my earliest childhood memories are steeped in being around the dining room table with my mom and my brother with all the crayons out and sketching and and drawing and coloring and so yeah probably from age three i've always and i'm 47 now not embarrassed to say my age <laughs> i'm proud of it i made it that many years <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it's I mean I guess you could say it's been a lifelong thing but I didn't go to school for art I went to college but I majored in something close to it and close to my subject matter I have a degree in horticulture from Iowa State University and so that's the intense cultivation of flowers and plants that's the basic meaning of horticulture so I have I have a lot of experience working in public gardens, um, mm. did internships at Longwood Gardens in Pennsylvania, which is like the Mecca of horticulture, and then worked for a couple of years at Chicago Botanic Garden as a senior horticulturist in their conservatories, then got tired of the city life and moved all the way to Southwest Iowa, where my husband is from, and started my first business doing dried flowers, mail order online with my first website. And then that morphed into a cut flower farm, acre of cut flower production, doing floristry, farmer's markets, weddings, funerals, all the, anything with flowers. So wow. I buy it kind of naturally and professionally, but I've kind of, I think my professional background was, always steering me towards this so mm, so when did you then find out that you wanted to paint flowers well i guess i've hmm, probably i mean i i really didn't get into painting too much until 
like 2016, but I have always been good at drawing and sketching and that was where I started. And then I, I, when I was working at Chicago Botanic Garden, I took my first oil painting class. I'd never touched a paintbrush for oils and I took one class and then I put it away for about 20 years <laughs> and then picked it back up um, in 2016 or 2013, I can't, somewhere in there after I had my second son. So it was wow. kind of an escape. It was kind of a what? An escape, just oh. for something different to do. Cause after I had my second son and I had him in 2010, I quit my, my job. I had a job working at a botanical garden here um, in Davenport and I have never gone back. <laughs> So I've been doing the stay-at-home mom thing, plus trying to hone my art skills and develop this this path and see where wow. it takes. I love hearing these stories. It it is just so inspiring because this reality always makes us all think that you are born into a family artist and at least your parents must have been great jazz musicians. <laughs> and so you got that artsy thing and you, you, you had art all your life. And then to find out these journeys, sometimes such wounded journeys, twisted journeys, oh, where yeah. we went into so many other areas. I was a financial advisor and portfolio manager for 11 years in Europe. And I also had this, I had this yearning. I was just like a volcano exploding. Literally, um, my body had a lot of inflammations. I had a lot of fire energy in me. And, and I almost actually left my body. I was on my way out when this, this one day I just had such a dragon energy, such a fire that I'm like, I'm going to find this. I'm going to move through this, you know. And I did. I found the Conservatory of Music in Luxembourg and then the art school and, and it went on and on. So the, the journey is not a linear journey. It is where we are growing like a flower, like, like a garden. We are, we are growing into our being, who we truly are. And we find out as we go, right? Yes, there's so many twists and turns. And I, as you were saying that, I. I'm thinking about, I watched your, your video with Carmen and you had so many great analogies and metaphors for life with flowers. And as you're talking, I'm thinking about how the way a rose is shaped, how it's spiral. I mean, the petals kind of spiral around a center, but they, you know, they're, they zigzag back and forth and go in and out. If you look down at the top of a, of a rose, And that's kind of similar to how our paths can be to wherever we're going. I still don't know where I'm going. <laughs> yeah. So let me ask you this. How has your knowledge as horticulturist contributed to your art? Oh, I feel like if I had not gone the path that I had gone, I have gone, I would not have as good of a familiarity and appreciation for colors mm -hmm. and ar arranging colors and textures and just the, I mean, I've always been interested in architecture. My dad is a carpenter. And so I guess you could say my parents are pretty creative, but in different areas, not I'm in all this flowy stuff. And they're like, my mom is a seamstress. And my dad is a carpenter, built both of our first two houses when we grew up. So he, wow. we, there's a lot of creativity there, but I feel like my appreciation for flowers is so much more intense than somebody who does not have my background because I appreciate their structure and I examine them up so close and mm. I'm fascinated by the way they're constructed too. And I, I don't understand it <laughs> of all the physics of it. I'm just completely enamored and fascinated by the way they're, they're built. Yes. So. 
Marie, I totally agree with you. You know, when when I have a flower in my garden that says, Bettina, paint me. And so if it is like very hot outside, for instance, irises, they don't make it very long in this heat. Mm -hmm. So then I will cut a flower and bring it in my studio and paint. And so I am all day long with it as I really, as you said, I look at the shape of the petal. How does the petal connect to the stem? How does this thing go, right? And so yeah. as I'm with the flower, I it moves, it is opening, right? And then at night it will close again. So yeah. I learned so much about flowers, about their life, about that every single petal is different. Where mm. like at first look, our brain will always tell us, oh, the sunflower petals, they're all the same. But it's not. Every mm -hmm. single one is different. So as painters, we witness this. It's a beautiful witnessing, right? And I remember I saw one of your, you have this beautiful sunflower field painting. Do you have it there? Can you show us this? What is the one there on, on yeah, down on your left? On my left. That? There is a, isn't there a, a flower painting? There is this one. Yeah, show us a flower painting. I have so many flower paintings. Just pick one <laughs> for now. <laughs> so wait, wait, wait. I'm going to get you the original. Yeah. Yes, this will be fun. Show us the original. Oh, the original wow. The is a tiny baby. Oh, a tiny baby. I love that. So this is this is the print. Mm. Oh. And they're from my garden, but this is the will it focus? Just come closer and hold hold still. Yes, now it's focusing in. Yes. Beautiful. Okay. So what is this? Is what technique? What medium? Can you see the texture when I hold it that way? Yes. A little. Okay, yes. it is, this is an oil painting mm -hmm. on, it's not paper, but it's th as thin as a sheet of paper, but it's vellum. It's mm. some kind of a poly material of sort, but I, I, I discovered it by accident. Like most of my art, a lot of it is kind of by playing and by accident that I have all these interesting things happen. And I had this, paper laying around from when I was a florist. Mm, <laughs> I see. Paper. It's all, they're all stepping stones, all the experiences. But I had this yeah. vellum paper that I had to buy a whole packet of to make price tags for items in my flower shop. Mm. And I'm like, what am I going to do with this? And then I was like, you know, this is a really smooth surface. Mm -hmm. And it was, it's not absorbent. So it worked really well for oils. Mm -hmm. And this picture, I actually applied it. I sat out on my front stoop where the daffodils were blooming and applied it with a palette knife, a tiny palette knife. Mm -hmm. And then I found that these types of prints or that, that paper, because it doesn't have the weave of the canvas, you can enlarge it and it doesn't show that weave texture so it's it so... doesn't get grainy yeah yeah ah wow, wow that's great yeah I so maybe that. you you could try it sometime i don't know it's kind of fun i i guess i like to experiment so much and i feel like i don't have a lot of space so i'm always using teeny tiny pieces of paper or teeny tiny surfaces to work on and then i enlarge those so wow how about you do you like to work small or large what's your favorite way to go my favorite way is the bigger the better so uh it is actually easier for me to paint a big painting like behind me here that you you cannot even see it fully it's like 64 inches tall oh. and then i think 43 wide oh wow and, and so this is where it is like a full body motion right where I'm all over and I'm it's it's actually covering the entire open space floor here in my studio I cannot paint bigger <laughs> um, so I'm tiptoeing around the board with the canvas and dancing around it and painting so this is my favorite and then 
I also paint small paintings. I can show you just a very small one. And so then when I paint like this one here, I bring it closer. Oh, yeah. So this is where I'm getting very into detail. So these are little canvas hearts and I can, I totally can enjoy this like tiny, tiny. And then I like, then I obsess about it and I go yeah. into all this detail and it's almost hard to stop. But when I have done a whole bunch of those, I, I got to paint big again and just like have space. Otherwise it's like too, too constricted. And so then I have all kinds of sizes in between because I want to have different sizes for different spaces. Not everybody can hang a big painting, but small ones or like a print. I show you this one here. The original is sold, but this is a small canvas print. Can oh, you yeah. see that? Yeah. Yeah. So this, the detail. This, yeah. This is an oil painting. And so there's, uh, I was in a field of sunflowers and there was this one honeybee in the sunflower all day long until oh. I was finished with the painting. And it was, it is so beautiful. Like what, what you said to, to this, and it's beautiful to find this out that you also have such an inspiration coming from nature. And then also as a florist, you know, and you must have a gift that is about combining flowers and greenery, making yeah. beautiful bouquets, which is an, I mean, it's an absolute art. And I did that for seven years, making bouquets at the Des Moines Farmer's Market. I bet wow. I made thousands of bouquets, <laughs> literally. <laughs> did you then also combine ribbons with it? Or was it the flowers combined and then with, with leaves? And did yeah. you also combine wildflowers? There's just beautiful combinations. Oh, yes. Or dried flowers in a bouquet, you know? We did... I would do some foraging like for like Queen Anne's lace and you know some of the things that are very plentiful and but then we had an acre of cut flower production and we wow. grew thousands and thousands of zinnias and gladiolus oh. all the old fashioned flowers and lisianthus and I don't know how oh many my god flowers but it was <laughs> Every Friday, you would have loved it. We had this <laughs> old arts and crafts style bungalow with wooden floors, and we had a cooler, a six by six walk in cooler oh. filled with all the flowers we picked throughout the week, and we would get them all out and fill the entire dining room with buckets of flowers. I'll have to send you a picture sometime. Oh. And it's like, oh. you, how, you can't you can't not be inspired because it's just you're just surrounded and we would make 30 to 50 bouquets ahead of time to take to the market the next morning <laughs> and just just to be in that space that in itself was just such a gift because i will always have those memories and then we'd go mm -hmm. to the market and i would make them on the spot so it was almost like a performance art too in itself because people were watching <laughs> yeah 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 and there would be music playing and you know if the music's faster i start working faster and it's just all interconnected so it so i'm i'm happy that i have those memories and that kind of brings me closer to doing that type of art too so. wow so, so then, um, do you paint from memory or where, where does the inspiration for a painting come from? Usually I, I, I kind of started out with photography back when I was still working at Chicago Botanic Garden. And that was in like 1998, 99. And then when I had my you know, when I was first starting my first business, I kind of had to learn product photography for my dried flowers and things. And then mm -hmm. as I tr we added on the fresh stuff, I got better and better at photography and I had to, it was kind of an out of necessity, but then I kind of got a little more in, once digital cameras came, became a thing, you know, you're kind of unlimited. So it allows you much more time to experiment and play with angles and light. Yeah. So, so do you also have your flower photography in your gallery? 
Yeah, I, I do a lot of macro photography and um, I have like a whole, I just added probably about a hundred images just for mugs. There's a section that just says mugs on my site that it's all macro photos. So wow. I think as I'm thinking of this, you know, I like to go out in the morning with my coffee and that's when I enjoy being in my garden the most. And do you do that? Do you like to go out with a, a cup of coffee or something in the morning? And oh my God, I have, I go with, I drink green tea. Mm. And so I go out with my fresh tea in the morning when it's like the strongest and the most beautiful. I add honey to it and I walk out in my garden and I'm just marveling at everything. I check on everybody and I also nibble here and there like when like sometimes I grow stevia and so mm -hmm. I eat a leaf or then there might be a vegetable or a ripe tomato so it's like yeah. this whole and I get it you have that space too with you it is it is beyond words right and so then I see the sunflowers and they are smiling at me and the the hummingbirds come and it is so so inspiring. So would this then also be something I'm always wondering what 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 could we give people as tools, you know, when they feel constricted or they feel uninspired? Like what would you say for people to what can they simply choose? Like something very easy to choose that could change things. What are you doing when you get like uh, <laughs> uh that happens a lot <laughs> <laughs> but i guess i mean i i could i do some i'm think i'm trying to think of like somebody if they're not ready to delve into art supplies but most people have a phone right so one thing that I like to do is I, I'll go out in my garden or out in nature somewhere and try to take close up pictures of things that I find interesting. It's kind of like foraging, but with your phone. Oh, I <laughs> like, like that. Foraging you know, with your phone. Yeah. You're, that's not, you're not taking anything, but you're taking, you're taking the pictures. And the reason I say that is well, I do with my macro photography, and even if you don't have a macro lens with your phone, you have to, in order to capture the image the way you, to get a really clear shot, it's almost like meditation and yoga because you have to calm yourself. You have to control your breathing and get into a space to where your heartbeat has kind of slowed down a little bit. Sometimes you have to hold your breath a little bit <laughs> because the phone can send, it will feel the vibration of the pulse in your fingers and it will shake the, it will cause a shake if you're zoomed in far enough with your camera. So when I'm, if I don't have time to go in the studio or do stuff with art supplies, I will go out in my garden and do that. And mm -hmm. by the time I'm done, if I spend maybe 15 minutes or so, it's like I've been meditating for 15 minutes because I feel calmer. I can breathe. And my husband and my family, they can tell when I have arted. <laughs> <laughs> much happier mom and a much happier wife after I had a chance to do something that allows me to turn my brain off. I mean, do you feel like your brain with social media and all the marketing and things that we have to do, do you feel sometimes like you can't s slow your mind down? Well, it is like, like uh, when I'm doing social media and I'm out there, I'm also tapping into everybody else who's out there. And it's like yes. frantic. It's like, yes. it, it feels as I might as well have my fingers in the electric outlet, right? <laughs> it feels like yes. this. And I start vibrating so, but with a crazy energy, not a good, not a good uh, intense humming, but it's like yeah. frantic, right? 
And so, um, yes, I know this very well. And the best thing for me is to just to just drop everything and go outside, no matter what the weather is, no matter whether it's summer or winter, I just have to go outside. I go walking and it changes everything. And I also always have my, of course, my cell phone with me and it really takes great pictures. And I'm just like on the same trails, I always take pictures. Like I have like, thousands of images, but it's same. You are so right. It's the beauty of something to catch something, to catch a moment, to catch even a sun ray. I mean, just look at the sun and the reflection and you see you see all these rainbow colors and playing with that. And you have something beautiful that you can then put on your as a wallpaper on your phone or you can even print it. I mean, just it is so fulfilling to have this this piece of art. And what I, why you were talking, I love the word arting. So <laughs> arting, arting beyond boundaries was just coming through. <laughs> arting beyond boundaries, you know. And I love the word arting because there's um, art is uh, when we talk about art, it is like uh, these objects of art, right? But arting is bringing it into an activity and into a journey. Um, and I just love the word, you know, I love and it. I feel, I feel like it doesn't have to be a painting. It doesn't have yeah. to be a photo. It can be the way you're doing the dishes or the way you're cleaning mm. something. There's an art to everything and it's how you do it. Not, yeah. not, not the end result. It's the process too, that can be the most fulfilling. Yes, absolutely. It makes totally sense. Life is an art. And what if what if your life is your canvas? Like if it was a canvas, what would you put in there? What would you add, right? Which yeah. would you choose? Which energies would you choose? Definitely. I see it this way also. Do you have a mug or something that like one of your beautiful mugs that you can show us or a print or I, I, I want to see some of your art. <laughs> Well, there's the blue one, the big one there also. Wow. Yeah, I got some big things out and yeah. things because sometimes I go big and this is Yeah, show them. Bring it closer. I love the colors. Look at this. Wow. This digital painting. And this is one that I did from memory. And I did it wow. outside in the heat of the summer in Bring it closer now. We want to see it close. Oh, wow. Look at this. Ooh. So you painted this outdoors? Yes, this is an oil painting on canvas. And I, these are, it's based on memories of different beaches I've been to mm. in different parts of the world from my travels. So wow. I just wanted a, a sea escape. Mm. I, I haven't made this one into a print yet, but it is for sale. Wow. Yeah, just, and this is for me also what art, like what art can create for us. I remember, um, I also, always also bought art, you know, and I had always my entire life, this appreciation for art and, and art has always changed something for me. And if there is a painting that spoke to me in a gallery or somewhere, I could, I could spend quite some time with it and just look at it. And so this is also what I tell everyone, pick a piece of art, pick a painting that that gives you something that creates joy or it creates relaxation yeah. for you. And having that in your space um, can change everything where maybe it is a, a, like a rainy, dark day in winter or whatever. And you walk past this beautiful, what you are just showed us the, the beach and, and the sky and you walk past and it brings a smile on your face. This is what art can do. And that's the contribution that art is, you know, where it I changes, it changes everything. And I feel like, I mean, it, it can be used in so many different ways, like, but my goal with mine is to provide an escape for people. 
because there's so much darkness in the world right now. And my philosophy has always been, you can't get rid of darkness with more darkness, only light. So mm -hmm. I try to put some, what, I mean, as small as I am on the planet, I'm just a little speck. <laughs> a little powerful to... speck, I would say. <laughs> we just you are a little it. speck that sees possibility, which is huge. <laughs> we went to see uh, Horton Hears a Who, the susical musical, and it was, I, I think I'm channeling that. I don't know if you know the Horton Hears a Who with the speck and... <laughs> You'll have to read some Dr. Seuss, read Horton Hears a Who. Anyway, where was I going? <laughs> <laughs> no, where, how you see art, you know, to, yeah, to like change. Like a light. Yeah, to change the energies and bring joy and light into the world. Yeah, yes, absolutely. I, I wish I could make one thing that would just open everybody's eyes to change things but i don't know what that is yet so i just well this is why you have many paintings and you have also a variety of art in your online gallery where everybody can choose what works for them right for i think a lot is also related to color for mm -hmm. somebody it might be the blue that is just speaking to them blue is such an amazing space and wide openness for somebody else, it might be a flower painting that is doing this. So like, I love letting the images speak to whoever. And some people like my dragons, other people choose an angel. And there's like, there's such a variety. And this is also why, why it's good to put this all out because you don't know exactly what will create this opening and this joy because we are all different we are on different journeys so it's yeah. beautiful that you offer this variety where people can browse through your gallery and find yeah. and then also they can find different sizes right they can find maybe it's a mug <laughs> yeah i mean i have <laughs> i have all the things i have anything from like graphic design type things like this Aww. is something for like somebody who used to live in the quad cities and it says totally worth it right where the quad cities is here with a heart oh wow but then i have i i was gonna show you because i don't just do flowers but i do i we call our van the van go <laughs> because <laughs> i paint in it while my husband is driving us across the state when we go to back home to his family's home in southwest iowa i have created all kinds of things in that space i bring my oil <laughs> in the van and do crazy things in there and do you spell it v-a-n and then g-o van yes no. or yes is it... <laughs> i love it <laughs> so but so this this little ornament oh, yes this is from the original painting sold, but I did a, a finger painting in the Van Gogh as we were driving across Iowa for Memorial Weekend one year. And the sun was setting and it was just so captivating and inspiring. So I literally squeezed paint out of the gouache paint tubes, which is probably the wrong way to use gouache paint, but I was just playing and this came out and I call it the, you know, it's like a sunset and I know a sunset on the way home for Memorial Day. I can't remember the exact title of it, <laughs> but uh -oh. it has to do with Memorial Day and an Iowa sunset. So, and it's yeah. so joyful. Yeah, it's just really colorful and it's a Christmas ornament. I don't have the ribbon on it right now, but yeah, this is one of the shapes of the ornaments. And the ornaments are in your gallery too, right? Yeah, there's there's like, I don't know how many shapes we have. These are metal, but they're, um, there's probably about eight or 10 shapes, I think. So. Wow, so beautiful. So I just quickly show one of my mugs. This yeah. is oh, that's one gorgeous. of my oil paintings, like a peony. Do you see here? 
Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> and so this is just really a beautiful mug. It, the the painting looks so wonderful on this. The I just, color is so good. Yeah, the color is fantastic. And the mugs go in the dishwasher. I love them. They are just, somebody once said to me, they are sitting so nicely in your hand. So it's like they sit nicely in our hand. So whatever that yeah, is. <laughs> is that the big one? Is that the bigger size? Yes, it's the 15 ounce. Yeah. I need to order some of those. I have the smaller one. And I yeah, I they are nice too. Designs. Yeah. 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 Very I love cool. them. So much fun. And um, yeah, so huh. What else can we talk about? Inspiration. So for people to, to just do something creative, especially now also, we are, we are in full winter, right? Here where we are, it, the days are short and it's really cold. And what I always say is there is such unique beauty to, to be found during this season um, when it's about the icicles and the cold and like frosting when you go out in the morning and there's a little ice on everything there's such sparkle it's beautiful yeah. maybe to capture that you know in a picture yeah. and um get, go outside and breathe and get some fresh air move your bodies <laughs> just like just getting dressed can <laughs> instead of being in your pajamas all day it right. can so <laughs> I mean, it's so tempting this time of year because it's cold and you're cozy. And when you work from home, it's so tempting to just be in your PJs all day. <laughs> but, yes, of course. <laughs> I mean, there are times when that happens, but I feel like just the act of getting dressed and doing that, just yeah. raising your arms and moving around lifts your spirits a little bit. Yes. And for me too, like if I'm not doing photography, I like to use oil pastels as more of a, a an art therapy exercise where I, if I, you know, there's so much going on this time of year and things get crazy and every now and then you just need to shut, shut everything out and recharge. And I will take oil pastels Turn them on their sides and use both hands and just start making shapes on the paper using different colors and with zero expectation mm. of it looking good. I don't care what it looks like. It's more the act of doing things with two hands helps you to turn your stop all of the things that you have to do going on in your mind. Yes. Yes. And it slows you down and it you get recentered. So that's yeah, I have an idea for you and it might be a little Christmas present that you gift yourself or somebody can gift to you. Do you know ink tents sticks? Mm -mm. Ink, I just discovered them uh, in North Carolina when I was down there for an art fair. I, of course, when I see an art supply store, it's like, oh, yes, I gotta go in. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's like a candy store. So yep. <laughs> there I saw ink tents and they are like, they are sticks like paint sticks and mm -hmm. it is ink but they are so compacted so you can make a drawing and then you can add some water and they will start running Ooh. so you can use this on canvas you can use it on paper I like Yupo paper do you know Yupo yes. yeah it also has this slick surface like uh, the other one that you mentioned this flower wrapping paper right so the slick vellum. and yeah. vellum and it doesn't sink in so you can apply these sticks thick you can paint with the side like really thick wide motions or like the the edges where it's very fine lines and i broke so many because i'm just going wild you know <laughs> and then it's like gone broken so anyway they are fun and then you can put water on with a brush or spray bottle and let things run and blend and so I like this too just it's always good to not have any expectations <laughs> I think ever. that's why I, I think that might be why I have never settled on one specific medium yeah I mean I feel what like what do you paint and so you said oil and what else I do I I've tried so many things but I think I just like to continuously learn 
yeah. but I did one summer where I focused on almost exclusively watercolor. Mm -hmm. And then I uh, have done some in acrylic inks, also alcohol inks. I, I developed a really neat t-shirt design for alcohol inks. Um, and then a fluid, fluid acrylics. Yes. And those, I have another surface for you to try that is free if you, well, if anybody in your house eats chips or <laughs> anything with a Mylar wrapper. Oh, I see. Uh, let me show you. Well, I'll get this iris since you were talking about irises. So this is a Lara bar wrapper. That's all it is. Mmm. Wow. And um, so what did you paint on with? I used acrylic ink or not acrylic ah. ink, fluid acrylics. I'm sorry. Yes. Fluid yeah. acrylic. Okay. This is a Doritos chip bag. <laughs> So everybody listen to this. If you have any chip bags at home, you can use those as substrates and paint on. Wow. Yeah. And you know, obviously it's not fancy, <laughs> but it's free. And because it's something that was gonna be thrown away anyway, it takes the pressure off of having to make sure you don't wreck the piece of paper you spent a ton of money on. And yeah interesting things happen. And the other thing, I'm always trying to find new surfaces that I can use, that I can either photograph or scan in and enlarge that don't have a lot of weave or texture. Yeah. And these are great for that. So I have a whole, <laughs> <laughs> I have so many Larabar wrappers. I don't wanna show you all of them, but. Well, this is fun. But and everybody I, can just play with this and try it yeah. out. Yeah. So this is like foxglove and iris and delphinium. Wow. They're all things from my garden. And then I did allium. Beautiful. I don't know. Can you see? Yes, I see it. Yeah, you can come a little closer and hold still. So the camera. Yes, there we go. This is beautiful. I love allium. Wow. So, and it's a really sloppy process. I use a really bad paintbrush that's totally destroyed, like all frayed out at the ends. And it's a daubing technique. I'm mm. blotting, blotting and daubing and it dries so quickly that you get all the layers and things without it turning into a muddy mess. So right. it's a fun thing to experiment with. That Beautiful. I could also yeah. be a nice holiday project with the kids, you know, to just yeah. paint and have fun and enjoy and everybody makes something. That's the beauty that I, I got this also from my grandmother, you know, when I grew up, she was the one who taught me knitting and all the, the needle crafts, like making things and fixing things. And, and so, um, that that got planted back then, you know, where we were during the winter, we were at her place and had a hot tea and then we would make something, you know, yeah, creative, which is so beautiful. So That's where do tough. people find where do people find your art? Um, I have a website and it's Marie Stevens art dot com. Mm -hmm. And that's where I have all the things. And I'm also on Facebook and Instagram and yeah. dabbling in TikTok, also a YouTube, but I'm mainly on Instagram and Facebook. Um, so I'm trying to dabble into all the socials, but you know how that goes. I'm I know. also on LinkedIn, yeah. but you can only do so much, right? Yeah, yeah. But the, the bulk of my the bulk of my posts are on Facebook and Instagram. Mm -hmm. So and I also have an email list that I'll send specials to my email subscribers. So they get and how do how do people get to your email subscription? Is it on your website? Yeah, there'll be a pop up that just okay. yeah. says to join. And then if you do pop or if you do join, there's a free Santa coloring sheet right now that you can download and and color. So 
That's awesome. You subscribe. Yes, go ahead and subscribe to Marie's newsletter and find all the goodies and whatever she is offering. I bet it is beautiful. I do also have a newsletter. It's at bettinamedini.art. So you find us actually everywhere. It's not hard. Yeah. <laughs> I will also put all the links here um, in the in the video. And well, Marie, is there anything, a last word that you would like to say? I just, I hope that, well, I just want to tell you, thank you for, for doing this. And I'm so glad I met you um, <laughs> on our art storefronts group and I really I, I found your words to be really inspiring so maybe we were meant to connect and so I'm glad <laughs> that we have and I hope that you continue to do this this um discussion yes thing because I think it's really fun and I think it's really important for people who may not be artists or they may wish they could do art to watch and think that it's not as intimidating as it seems like we're not these special I mean we're special <laughs> but, <laughs> yes <laughs> I mean I'm special no. <laughs> we all are <laughs> but we can all be creative and yes. I hope that what people get out of this is that maybe they'll learn ways that they can be creative and things that they can tap into for their own self-care and their own just enlightenment because yes. i think it's so valuable and i wish more people would take advantage of all the th all the benefits of creativity and creating things yes so. and for all of you who are watching this now also go to marie's website go to her gallery and look at all the images and what, what image speaks to you? What image would create joy in your life? Would give you this giggle? Maybe also the reminder for yourself that you can be more creative than you ever thought. So find this piece and then you can buy a greeting card. You can buy a little ornament or you can buy a big print. You can buy original paintings from her. I also have original paintings. I have tiny, tiny things. And so find this, this gift, it is the gifting season. And what if you gift something to Even you? Even stickers. <laughs> yeah, for your future, you know, and, and something that inspires you and put it on the wall. It's a tiny thing that you put on your wall or the big painting and see what it creates for you. I totally believe in art. Art has saved my life, art has, contributed to me in so many ways and I know it is possible we actually make it possible by offering all these tote bags and pillows and whatnot right it's all online it's all available for you to choose from so Marie thank you so much for jumping on and saying thank yes you. to this adventure <laughs> yes, <laughs> have I a hope wonderful holiday and you it was too. really nice to meet you and to talk with you and I see you soon somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for hosting. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone.